A person who actually, I have to set up the context. I feel like people won't recognize him when I describe him now. If I say now LS, everyone knows him. He's a giant core stream. He literally makes mm-hmm. millions of dollars a year. He essentially can do anything he wants in esports. He can kind of add the run of the table. And I would say in his own way, he's almost like part of the furniture of League of Legends now. Everyone accepts him. Even if people don't like him now, they've sort, they sort of begrudgingly allow him his space. They don't hate on him, right? But do, do you remember when he was doing the commentary back in the days you're talking about? And especially when you combined the broadcast, it was you and him. That was when, he, if people don't know, even as an analyst and a content creator, he was very controversial and divisive at the time, actually. A lot of people didn't like him or they thought like, even though now they sort of credit him as sort of a sage figure. And back then they thought he was pretentious and he's, you know, he's just coming up with these crazy ideas. And so one of the things I've always credited you for actually is, I do think you were a very good foil for him as a commentator. Because at the time, I was friends with him. I'd known him a long time. But I used to even tell him privately, dude, like, look, do the YouTube videos. But like, I don't have commentaries for you, mate. Like, it's live. It's been prompted. You haven't got time to sit down and do a 20-minute digression about Dragon Ball Z and how it relates to, like, fakers playing a zero or something. But I thought you did a very good job sort of humanizing him and, and, and making it, like, a fun... You sort of counterbalanced his... How intense he is. And I felt like you are part of the reason why people started to accept him. I think I think you, you made him palatable, as it were. I think, like, LS... Because he started uh, casting with Valdez, I believe. Um, I think so, yeah. Over at Spoo TV um, in 2017. We also spent a little bit of time together in LA when we went over for Worlds because Worlds was in China and they did the first bit remote. Um, I believe that was 2017. It's really, really hard. All of the years have kind sure. of meshed together. But there was a time where we spent a bit of time together over there. Um, he got a bit sick over there, if I, if I remember correctly. If you know LS, he gets um, sick everywhere, but yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, that's true. He is a professional hypochondriac. <laughs> yes. Um, but he is, he, he was someone that I'd sort of seen around for quite, quite, a, quite a bit. Um, as someone that never leaves his house, like seeing him around quite a bit means, you know, uh, at work things and stuff like that, um, that we had seen, uh, uh, had been to together in the past. Um, so thankfully, like when I first met him, he was already somewhat practiced and he knew me, uh, relatively well as well. So because we had that, it was actually, I think to my advantage when it came to, to trying to work out how to, how to cast with him. And I casted with so many different people as well. Like, um, we were having the conversation about the LPL that meant that I was casting with four or five different, um, color commentators. Over at MSI, I got thrown with absolutely everyone. Every year after that was completely different co-casters. So learning different people's ticks and the things that are universal and the things that aren't, right, was something that I had actually had a fair bit of practice with. Um, and so I just had to sort of get into the LCS, as the LCS, the LS gear um, in order to work with him. And he's got such a huge brain that it's actually very, very easy. You just need to do what I was talking about and set up some foundation so that he can just, you know, build the house. And he does it extraordinarily well. He's when LS is talking about something that he's confident talking about, um, be that obscure pop culture references, Magic the Gathering, or very high le- level League of Legends, he will just go. And so I just wind him up and he'd go. And then I just hard interrupt him if there was any action that happened. And I did that in, you know, the most, you know, courteous way possible. And that was sort of how it worked. And it worked really, really well. It got to the point where, um, you know, coming to work and working with LS was as easy as working with Papa, which was not something, <laughs> it's not something that I say lightly, right? Like for and Spawn, I think will always be the, the casters that made me into the guy that I am today. Um, and they will always be the ones that were easiest to work with. But man, like LS really got close and that's, like you mentioned, he's not a natural when it comes to commentary, but I think that he really found his niche and just carved it out for himself. He was like, no, I'm not going to change. You're going to accept that this is how I do this job and you're going to enjoy it. And people did. <laughs> so it worked out in the end. Um, it was me and gone? it was uh, Valdez that were able to do it as well. Valdez also, I think, started playing magic with him. Oh, uh, right. To, uh, That's you know, the help, right. Help start things. Makes he, sense. Was, he was method acting real hard. Um, no, he wasn't. He actually just really enjoys uh, those sorts of games. Um, but that wasn't that wasn't quite as much for me. So they went off and did that a bit together. I think, you know, um, they really started a friendship during uh, their time at Spo TV, and that carried forward um, to the LCK as well. And I got lucky also because we started the Pog State. Um, LS and I. So this is something I want to ask you about. A whole bunch of other stuff that we were talking about. So as well. 
the reason I actually do want to ask you specifically about the the podcast you're talking about, the Pog State, is to me, dude, this is actually when the LCK got a new identity because before it really was, like I said before, it was like Monty and Dora and then it was like there's a Papa era and then once Papa leaves and it's just you and LS and Val, it could have really just gone to pot there. Like, like without being insulting, they know all of them. The reason why, one of the reasons the LPL isn't universally loved isn't that the games aren't great. It's that it's a lot of newer talent. It doesn't really have a, a coherent identity. And like you say, they cycle so many casters and there's eight or nine people. I thought actually what the Pog State did was it kind of laid a foundation for the narratives and for, and for humorous elements and getting to know little details about the players. I think actually that really did sort of revivify the, the LCK for me. So you, you play, played quite a pivotal role in that, right? Well, yeah, um, it was it was kind of my my baby off the back of something that Papa was pushing for for many years. We would not have a podcast um, without Papa, but after he left was when we finally got the resources to actually be able to make it happen. And I was like, well, there's no way we're not trying to make sure that we actually make this work because otherwise, you know, like the memory of Papa Smithy is, you know, not, is going to be very upset at me. Um, and the real one probably would too. Um, so we really pushed very hard to make that happen. And I was having a lot of conversations with, I think, Ye one at the time, who was uh, our producer. We've uh, gone through a few of them until we got to um, GSUN, but the Ye one era was a fantastic one for us. She helped um, import a lot of really great talent. Uh, she helped us find uh, Chronicler and um, and helped us get Wolf in as well and things like this. Right. So there are, there are a lot of... Uh, a lot of things that she really helped out with and one of them was the podcast and she also got us hooked up with two guys that were working for netflix at the time that were producing the podcast okay for us yeah and so we had a guy that was producing and then um an editor as well who was also working on similar projects and the two of them um really like i don't know i hadn't really been used to edited content before because i'd been like a live yeller into a microphone for a really long time and so to see what they managed to do, even with the very first episode, was like pretty impressive, um, in my opinion, because we didn't have like they weren't crazy amounts of scripts, and you can't really script LS just in general. Sure. Um, so that was always really difficult to do. Uh, so we just had to see where it goes, and then Ian, who was our editor, um, would put it into something that made some sense. And we ended up having a whole heap of fun with some crazy stuff, like we did an LS house tour and all sorts of stuff. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.